Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, good to connect with you. Uh, today we will have our class online. Um, let's pray and uh, we'll get started. I just want to request someone from the class to please go ahead and uh, lead in prayer. Kindly unmute and pray, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you for this morning, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for helping us to have this class. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. And Lord Jesus, Father, as we go through this session of Father, Lord, Holy Spirit, teach us, lead us, and guide us. Father, help us to have more faith in you, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, Father, I pray for Nancy, ma'am, also, Lord. Give her wisdom, give her knowledge and strength. Lord, Holy Spirit, speak through us, minister through us. Let this session, Lord Jesus, Father, teach us more of Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you for that uh, prayer. Uh, OK, good morning, everyone. I see your messages on the chat. All right. Um, Today we will continue um, to discuss about faith, but before we get into what we have for today, we'll talk about um, some very key concepts like uh, faith, what is faith, and what is hope, what is love. Uh, but before that, uh, maybe we can just uh, share a little bit regarding the life of Abraham and how you've learned something from the life of Abraham and uh, his journey of faith, you know, the steps of faith that we discussed in the last class. So uh, if there's anything that has really impacted you from Abraham's journey, maybe you can uh, share that. And then you know I'll get into the subject for today. So Abraham's journey of faith. OK, feel free. I mean, anyone can just speak up. Uh, you can either unmute your uh, mics and talk or uh, post your comments on the chat. I'll read it out. Any takeaways from the last class? Sister, can I say something about Abraham? Sure, sure, Sister Gertrude, please go ahead. Yeah, Abraham, he got his son uh, Isaac at the age of 100. And mm -hmm. when Sarah was... Uh, uh, beyond the age of childbearing and God wanted to test his faith and asked him to sacrifice his only son and Abraham did not hesitate he prepared and he took his servant and Isaac and he went on uh, Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son but God knew that his heart that he is very faithful and he provided a lamb instead of uh, his son and uh, that shows that Abraham uh, did not waver in his faith. Mm. Mm. OK, so um, the testimony of Abraham, where he was strong in his faith and that he didn't waver, uh, yeah. that's something that uh, you have taken away. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Lucy also has a comment here. She says, uh, just obey God. His plans are great, how Abraham moved um, on obeying God. So obedience to God is um, something that she has noted. Anything else that stood out for you? Because you know when we talk about uh, um, someone uh, or let's say uh, a truth from God's word, um, hopefully that has gone registered in our hearts and uh, we can apply that in our own lives. Because if we don't understand it, we can't apply it. So that's why I'm asking you so that I know what you have understood. Um, from the last class. So Sanjay has a comment. He says, Abraham wasn't perfect in his faith, 
yet god was understanding and he continued to guide him even though he went against god's will at times god will never leave us nor forsake us yeah that's true because we saw how uh there uh, were times when abraham made mistakes uh but there were also times when abraham was um, not maybe you know a little bit of doubt came into his heart but we know how god uh, called him and reassured him with a vision he um gave, he refreshed the vision so that abraham could hold on to the promise of god so in that sense it's true uh, what sanjay is sharing here that uh, god is so kind and so merciful that uh, we can keep following after him um so he helps us even in our moments of weaknesses that's uh, good sanjay anything else that uh, others have picked up ke parmita even though mm -hmm. abraham yeah yeah jennifer just coming to you a moment uh, i'll read out parmita's uh, comment here she says even though abraham didn't know about celestial bodies he believed god um okay all right yeah I, i guess we know more now than abraham did back then okay jennifer uh, your turn please go ahead you can unmute and uh, speak uh yeah ma'am uh, when god called him uh, abraham came out of his comfort zone from his place land people from his riches everything and he followed uh, uh, god's word and he went out of his nation traveled him uh, he put his complete trust in uh, obedience and to god so that god made a blessing for us all over the nations mm -hmm. yeah so when god called he just stepped out by faith uh, and you know that has become a blessing for all of us um yes jennifer thank you so much for uh, sharing uh, that that key point um i'll move on to the chat okay sunny moses through abraham though abraham didn't see the results at his present times yet still he had faith in god and his promises we also saw certain steps of faith such as he believed god against all hope he still believed all right yeah that's fine that's good uh daniel abraham had full faith that even though god was saying to sacrifice his son he is faithful to fulfill his promise without isaac also okay uh well we we do have an insight of what um abraham thought when he was sacrificing isaac so uh, i i know daniel has mentioned that uh, he had the faith in god to uh, move on even without isaac but uh, scriptures tell us that he believed that god could raise up Isaac from the dead that you know even if God is asking him to sacrifice Isaac um God is able to resurrect him so uh, Abraham had faith even for the resurrection uh, of his sacrificed son okay uh, right let's let's move on so the life of abraham the journey of abraham it's an inspiration for us that is why abraham is known as the father of faith so some very important things uh, that we must remember from abraham's steps of faith um, are that god is a promise giver so in all of our lives uh, we we must hear from god what is god speaking to me in my journey or it could be more specific to the situation that we find ourselves in so what is the word of god for that situation the promise of god for that situation then after we hear the word of god the intention or the promise of god then starts the journey so in the case of abraham we saw that uh, he began uh, it wasn't perfect right it it's not like he um, was was so uh, strong in what god called him to do that he did not have doubt or uh, he did not um, um sort of um, go away from what had what god had told him to do these things happened even in abraham's life but the the fact is that he became stronger and stronger and that is what the steps of abraham are all about we saw those steps how he believed god that's the first thing okay god said it i believe it against all hope he hoped in god so he had an expectation from god that god would do it and then we saw how 
you know he um uh, went on he uh, gave he thanked god he gave glory to god his faith became unwavering or uh, his faith came to a place where it was not shaking anymore uh, uh, he was firm in his faith uh, and then you know he went ahead and he received the promise of god so uh, it's it's like stages or steps uh, as we see the fulfillment of god's promises for our lives so we must be ready and willing to make this journey ourselves so uh, here the last comment from deepu she says abraham believed that uh, who gives life to dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist okay sure so uh, this is again you know with regard to the scripture from romans chapter 4 uh, verse 70 now we can move on let's move on to the next uh, topic here this is regarding faith hope and love so we'll discuss what these terms mean uh, now each of them has a separate or a distinct understanding uh, for us so that's what we want to grasp uh, so that we are able to walk in what um, these terms mean so i'll i'll try and explain them to us um, and if you have any you know um, questions or clarifications regarding this uh, we can talk about it so uh, faith hope and love we know that in first corinthians chapter 13 um, we are encouraged that uh, these are the three things that ultimately uh, remain and uh, they are so essential for the lives of uh, believers but what is faith what is hope and what is love you know that's the question we we, uh, we are asking so when we talk about faith we've seen that um, faith is uh, in the now a few points that we understood faith is in the now Adding faith. Now, when we talked about faith, we also mentioned that faith is a substance of things which we hope for. So, what is this hope? And I was sharing with us earlier that the word hope uh, in English uh, may not give us an idea of certainty. So, whenever we say uh, something like, uh, I hope the internet is strong throughout this session, uh, it's it doesn't necessarily mean that the internet is going to be strong you know it could remain strong or you know something could happen to it but the uh, biblical understanding of the word hope is that when you say i am hoping that god will do something uh, it is certain it will happen so my hope is that uh, god will provide for my need when i'm saying that in a biblical sense i mean that god will provide or I hope that God will um, grant me wisdom and understanding. The uh, actual uh, biblical understanding would be that, yes, God will do it for us. So hope is very certain as far as the biblical understanding is concerned. So um, hope, okay. Uh, what else can, can we understand about hope? I, I just shared that hope is uh, certainty. Um, it has an element of certainty. Uh, and hope is also um, an expectation, okay? Uh, an expectation, or we may want to call that it is um, uh, a, a positive uh, expectation from God or a confident expectation from God where uh, we are steady and optimistic that something is going to take place and uh, something good is going to happen so the best example as far as hope is concerned is i think i, I shared with us uh, uh, some classes ago that you know when you look at little children and you know they have their birthdays coming up they have a very positive um, expectation that uh, yes you know my birthday is going to come it's going to be a great time so they keep expecting it you know maybe months ahead they have a positive expectation so hope is that hope is a a, a positive or a confident 
or an optimistic expectation from God. Now, when we say that we have faith and we lack hope, um, then there is a disconnect. For example, if I say that, uh, um, you know, I, I trust that God will um, bless let uh, okay bless my ministry uh, or maybe you know I, i'm called to to be a pastor and i've planted a church and uh, my faith is that yeah god will bless my ministry my work will grow um, that uh, i i will be a um, blessing to many people but if i lack hope uh, what is hope i just shared it's a positive expectation within my heart so the positive expectation will keep me excited. It will keep me um, strong. Uh, it will keep me, uh, you know, rejoicing in God. Now, uh, it may not necessarily be in my emotions. I may not be all cheerful and bubbly outside. But somewhere in the depths of my heart, um, I, I am um, uh, positive. Okay, I am rejoicing. I know, yeah, it's going to come. I have a sense of expectation like that little child that surely the Lord will do this in my life. But if I lack that expectation, that's when I'm saying that I'm lacking hope. Okay, uh, so that's how we understand hope. So hope says that, yes, at the right time, God will do it. Uh, 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 someday, I'm going to see a manifestation of this. Uh, I'm waiting. But there will be a fulfillment. So it's a joyful expectation of our hearts. Uh, when we lack expectation, uh, it can be quite challenging you know, to, to make our journey that way. Also, the Bible has uh, something more to say about hope. Uh, so if someone can turn to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19. Uh, can somebody read that? You can open up to Hebrews 6, 19. Can unmute and read. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the evil. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. So, you know, here we see this term that ho this hope we have as the anchor of the soul okay and uh, i've described uh, earlier about how we are a tripartite being we have spirit we have soul we have body so in our soulish man okay or the place which is the seat of our will uh, our emotions our um, uh, thoughts that is the soul that's the soul part of us now in my soul if i lack hope Okay, uh, then uh, I am like a like a ship uh, which which has no anchor. Uh, uh, maybe we we might have uh, seen some some place, maybe in some pictures or uh, let's say uh, um, um, some visuals that uh, a boat which is not anchored at the shore, uh, it it can just move with the waves and uh, be so unstable uh, or even you know be beaten up by the the winds and the waves and be destroyed uh, but when there is an anchor there is a stability so even in our lives when we check our own souls if we lack hope uh, in god okay there's no expectation god if you do it's okay if you don't do it's okay uh, um, you know i will still be faithful that kind of an of 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 a state of mind uh, well it sounds very godly but the bible says the hope is the anchor of the soul so the soul needs an anchor in god where we have a positive expectation from god and we are saying uh, i am expecting god said in his word and he will do it for me and so there is this positive expectation that we maintain in god so hope is the anchor of the soul and we see that both faith and hope exist together they can't really um, uh, exist separately i can't say that uh, i have faith in god uh, but i have no expectation okay so that uh, shows a lack of faith because what what does the scripture say 
that faith is the substance uh, of the things that we hope for. So if I'm hoping for something, then I have faith about it. But if I'm saying that I have faith, but I don't have any hope, I have don't, I don't have any expectation, then my faith is not really, um, you know, the the in the manner that it should be. Uh, so my soul is lacking the anchor of hope uh, which is also essential for my journey so have a uh, paint a picture of hope in your mind based on the promises of god so how do we do this um see it i we we're not we're not talking about some worldly concept because these days we have uh, concepts where you know, people say, imagine yourself, whatever you want, you imagine yourself uh, uh, doing that. So uh, I remember like back in our school days, uh, some of the students uh, in my batch, they used to say, oh, if you expect uh, to get, uh, you know, the top ranks in, in school, then just take a few moments to imagine yourself uh, getting that rank or uh, getting the award, getting the medal. Uh, of course, you know, you have to work hard. It's just not going to come because you're you're imagining it and you're assuming and painting pictures in your mind. But the the difference here that we are talking about today is that when God says something, OK, that's the truth. Uh, and so uh, it is uh, OK for us to paint a picture in line with the promise of God. Don't just paint a picture based on imagination uh, and whatever we want and we like. That is not the right kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, hoping. But when we paint a picture in line with God's promise, um, that is helpful. So in Genesis 15, if you recall, in the journey of uh, Abraham, the steps of Abraham, we said that God showed him the stars and God showed him the sand. What, what is the picture there? the sand, the stars, these were all pictures to Abraham. So as a desert man, every time he would see the stars, he would hope in God and say, God has promised it will happen. That every time he would touch the sand, he would say, I know it's going to happen. It'll happen, right? So God gives us these pictures based on his word, OK? And that is something that you and I can, um, uh, you and I can, you know, sort of uh, uh, take advantage of. So, based on the promise of God, we can picture ourselves. So, if God has promised a blessing in our lives, uh, uh, we can, we can, as we pray, we can say, God, give me a picture, give me an image in my mind that I can look at and say that, yeah, it's going to be like this. Um, I'm waiting, but God is going to do it. It looked like this. I will, you know, my family will look like this, or my ministry will look like this, or my future will look like this. Um, so what is that? It, it's like Genesis 15, where there is a picture. So like even in the, um, the corporate world, I think they have this new concept. It's called as the vision board. So uh, what they tell people to do is you have a board. And on that board, you, you put pictures of whatever you want to see happen. OK, something like, OK, I want to go for a holiday to a certain place. They take a picture, and then they put it there. Okay. What what are they doing? It's somewhat like what we are talking about. But the only difference is that uh, what people do outside of God and outside of the, uh, the, the scriptures, uh, we don't know whether, whether those things will happen or not happen because God never said that. But for us, we are sure that if God has promised, he will do it for us. So I, ho uh, I hope that you have understood the meaning of hope. Uh, we will now move on. Um, as we talk about faith, a little bit about faith. So faith, we've explained it. Faith is uh, in the now. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Or in other words, it's like a uh, it's like a sixth sense in our spirit, where uh, we have a knowing that uh, uh, this is what God is going to do. Now, while this is what faith is, what about feelings? Okay, what about emotions? Now, for Abraham. Think of Abraham. God promised him a son. 
but he was so old his wife was so old uh, so would there have been days when he felt okay felt his feelings in our emotions in our soulish man he felt sad or he felt discouraged or he felt um, uh, you know like uh, dejected he felt uh, hopeless um, what about all these feelings uh, what, you know how how does that affect the faith which is in his heart so the point we want to make is that you see our feelings can change right so we have the promise of god one day we feel happy one day we feel sad you know when things are going good we feel like yes god is doing it uh, on the days when uh, you know we're, we're just not able to do do it right we feel that uh, hey nothing is happening uh, I, I i don't i don't feel good you know i had so all kinds of negative emotions how do we deal with this okay we have to understand that faith and emotional feelings um there is an association yes but they can be separate so even on days when we don't feel great that a, you know god's promise will be fulfilled we can still have faith in our hearts so don't go by feelings you know when if we go by feelings uh, we won't do anything isn't it uh, so sometimes like um, let's say even in ministry uh, when let uh, we have to minister we have to go and pray for someone or we have to stand up and preach on one sunday uh, you know the fact is sometimes you don't feel like it sometimes you feel like oh I, I'm so tired, or I'm so this or that, and something else is going on. If we go by feelings, we won't do anything, right? But if we go by faith, you just stand up, you just go ahead, you just do it because you're supposed to do it, because God told you to do it, right? So we move by faith, not by feelings. Feelings are um, like the weather. Uh, morning, it's cold. Afternoon, it's hot. Evening, it's pleasant it'll keep changing so don't base your journey of faith on the basis of feelings because it it'll never work out so uh, yes feelings can change but uh, our faith is not dependent on feelings and god wants us to be um, beyond it uh, sometimes there are good feelings associated with our faith and that's wonderful because it it makes our journey easy uh, but don't depend on it. Uh, do you know anyone in, in the Bible who wanted to, you know, first check the promise of God and, uh, you know, um, sort of be, uh, feel positive about it and only then believe? So was there anyone who didn't believe first and first wanted to check? Gideon. Gideon? Um, okay yeah he didn't believe yes but he didn't really ask for a test to check the the promise but you're right one one part is correct that he didn't believe uh, initially he was uh, thinking that you know maybe i'm not the right person that god called but thank you uh, brother biju for uh, sharing that sister, so, sister can i say jonah jonah okay right uh fine he didn't believe that's true um but he didn't necessarily test he didn't say okay show me i want to feel and touch then i'll confirm uh he didn't do that so but yeah jonah you're right he disobeyed god he wanted to do his own thing uh okay i can see a lot of answers here in the chat but uh, akhil since you raised your hand please go ahead thomas uh Okay, I think uh, Brother Biju answered that. Yeah, Thomas, Thomas, of course, because he wanted to uh, put his, he wanted to touch the um, the wounds of Jesus before he could believe, right? But what did Jesus say after that? Akhil, uh, any idea? Do you want to? Answer that. What What did Jesus say after he touched, and then he confirmed? Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, you are. I can. Yeah, hear sorry. You. So um, it was, you know, for a proof or a evidence that Thomas was seeking for, and uh -huh. Jesus said, "Blessed are the ones who uh, don't see and yet believe." 
That's right. Yeah. So see, Thomas was he wanted evidence first, then believe. Okay, little different from Abraham. Abraham, but what did Jesus tell him? Blessed are those who believe, right? Uh, uh, without seeing, um, as even though he has answered here. So faith journey is like that. First, God calls us to believe, and then. In the right time, we will see the promise of God fulfilled. But blessed are those who believe. You got to believe first. Uh, don't go by feelings. If we go by feelings, we will not really uh, be able to not believe. Now, uh, I, I hope that's okay. Uh, is there any um, follow up questions to that thought? Or are we clear about that? Faith and feelings. OK, great. So um, yeah, and I think it's applicable in everything. You know, We, we say that uh, uh, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Some days we just don't feel like it. Or we say, um, uh, I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. But we don't feel very blessed in our emotions. Don't worry about it. Live by faith, not by feelings. Okay, Keep moving ahead, because that's what God's word says. And it is true. Now coming to. Faith versus doubt. What about doubt? We saw faith and feelings, faith and doubt. Um, there are uh, instances in uh, scripture, and it's there in our notes also, times when the disciples doubted uh, doubted, and did not take a step. Uh, for example, when there was a storm, um, they feared that the storm would um, destroy them. And Jesus rebukes them. We saw that. He said, hey, uh, where is your faith? Uh, and similarly, when uh, the disciples are not able to cast out a demon, uh, Jesus again rebukes them. You know, and he says, uh, "How long shall I be with you, you, um, you know, uh, unbelieving, perverse generation?" So he rebukes them for the lack of faith, uh, and he talks about how it is through faith that. You know, um, many of these miracles are possible or God's intervention is possible. So uh, how do we deal with doubt? You see, doubt is something that um, we can have in our hearts. But what did Jesus uh, tell us? You know, doubt interferes with faith. In Mark 11, 23, remember, Jesus taught us. He said, have faith in God. Uh, if you say to this mountain, you know, be um, uh, uprooted and cast into the sea. And if you do not doubt in your heart. So when there is doubt, faith cannot operate. So it's either uh, faith or doubt. So when there is doubt, doubt will extinguish faith. Or doubt will make faith inoperable. Okay, so we must not have any place for doubt in our hearts. See, it's like replacement. I can either have faith or I remove that. I can either have doubt. Got it? But both of these um, will bring some results. So when I have faith, it will bring the fulfillment of God's promise. But when I have doubt, what will that bring? It will bring whatever is associated with it or attached to it. Things like fear, things like um, discouragement, things like uh, lack of peace in our hearts. Uh, or, um, you know, it, it's connected to torment. Torment is, uh, you know, it's like there's no peace. There's just disturbance inside our heart. So doubt is connected to that. When we doubt God and God's promises, we will experience all of these things in our spirit, in our um, mind, in our emotions. But the opposite of that is faith. So if you replace doubt with faith, you'll experience what is associated with it. Things like peace, joy, hope, all of that will come into our hearts when we have uh, faith. So uh, it's one or the other. right? So get rid of uh, any doubt in our hearts and how much faith do we need how much faith do we need how much faith is uh, god asking us to have hey just as a master steel yeah little bit right so so little and that's enough to actually um, defeat doubt which we may be carrying in our hearts so let me quickly look at uh, the chat here because Deeksha, Deeksha is asking 
doubt and lack of hope, uh, can we say it's the same? Doubt and lack of hope. Um, okay. Doubt and lack of hope. Um, I, I mean, I would, um, my answer would be that uh, it's not. Because, see, doubt is, doubt is your, um, there's no faith only. Okay, there's no faith. When you say doubt, like doubt has overcome, then you're saying um, that the portion that must be occupied by faith is now occupied by doubt. Okay, but when you say that there is no hope, it could be that one has faith, but they are not actively hoping. Okay, so faith can be there, but something within them is, uh, uh, you know, that something needs to be awakened so that they can also start to hope. So lack of hope uh, could be that, you know, there is faith, but uh, we, we are not, we are not allowing that hope to be alive in us. Uh, I really don't know if I explained myself clearly to you, Diksha. I can only hope that you're not confused and you got something from what I said. D did it make sense? Okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, all right. Coming to Jennifer. Yeah, so Jesus told that if we say to the mountain, move the mountain, it should move. He wants us to have such kind of faith. Okay, right. So to have strong faith. So when we say faith, um, the quality in itself, right? When we say I have faith, uh, it, it already possesses the ability to do what God wants done. So yeah, even if it's a little bit of faith, it has that ability or the quality or the characteristic to uh, do what God wants us to do. And just a little bit of faith. Mustard seed faith is what God is asking us for. So this is how we, we uh, uh, you know, consider faith and doubt. And one more thing about uh, doubt is that, uh, remember we said faith is of the heart. So uh, we can have faith in our heart, but in the mind, Okay, in the mind, uh, we can have questions. Uh, where where do these questions come from? Questions in the mind, where do they come from? With our insecurities and doubts. Okay, uh, insecurities and doubts, our own. Okay, so they are our own. It's coming from within us. Okay, great. So uh, doubts come from us. We could say that. Where else do they come from? From Satan. That's right. Very good. So uh, there are two sources, okay, two primary sources uh, from where lies or untruth comes to us. One is our own hearts. Because we are not grounded in the truth of God's word. So what happens? We then start to think untruth. That, you know, the same examples that I gave earlier. Oh, I'm not the righteousness of God or I am not blessed. Why? Because we are not anchored in the word. We don't know the word or we are not, uh, we have not settled the word in our hearts. So where, where is doubt coming from? From our own heart. It's coming from our own heart. Okay. So then there's work to do within our uh, in our minds in our hearts to settle the word of god that's where uh, romans 12 where uh, paul wrote he said uh, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind the mind is very very important for a believer okay that's the place where you win the battles the mind renewed mind with the word of god and the second thing that uh, came through right now is that uh, these doubts come from satan Remember, how did he deal with Eve? God told them, don't eat from this tree, uh, 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 you know, of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, he comes to Eve and he puts a doubt. Did God really say? Did God really say to do this? Then she was in doubt. Adam was in doubt. They're like, oh, 
Did God really say? Because they were not firm. But where did this thought come from? Just one thought, right? Did God really say? And then he goes on to tell more lies. He says, no, if you eat from this, you will become like God. And they believed who? They didn't believe God. They believed the devil. They believed Satan. So Satan brings lies in our minds. And if, again, I'm not, uh, my mind is not renewed by the word of God, what will happen? I'll agree. Uh, OK, I'll agree that, uh, yeah, whatever Satan is saying, maybe that is the truth. But if I know the truth, what, what can I do as a believer? I say, I rebuke you, Satan. I reject that in the name of Jesus. So I can battle against every doubt that comes in my mind. But the point that I'm trying to make is, you see, we can have faith in our heart. Okay, we can have hundred percent faith in our heart, but uh, that doesn't mean that we won't have questions in our minds. Because sometimes, through our own thinking, we end up having questions, or Satan will put doubts. You know, demons will put doubts in our minds. They'll make us question. But don't worry about it, because even though there are all these things going on in the mind, faith is still there in the heart. Okay, that doesn't mean we are doubting. Having questions doesn't mean that we are doubting God. We just need to know how to deal with it. If it is a sincere question that um, we must find answers to, then we've got to know how to um, study the word of God and find answers in it. But if it's not a sincere question, if it's just the lies of the devil, or if it's just my wrong uh, concept about something, then I have to learn how to demolish that. Remember? Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said, taking every thought captive, even one thought which is not of God, we don't want that in our head. We have to demolish that thought and allow the word of God to rule and reign in our hearts. So uh, yes, there can be questions in the mind, but that uh, doesn't take away the faith in our hearts. Now moving on to the last uh, concept here, which is about love. Okay, So what is love? Love is... Um, uh, a characteristic of God. It comes from God. God is love, the scriptures tell us. So how do we understand this love? There's a lot in our notes, uh, but I'll just touch on the key points and maybe you can go back and study more about what, um, you know, what kind of love the Bible is talking about. Uh, the Bible teaches us that we must be motivated by love whatever we do it must come from a place of love even our faith walk okay must come from a place of love otherwise what happens we we um want to show off our faith and all the mighty things that our faith can do but we don't have sincere love in our hearts whether it's towards god towards people um you know towards god's work uh, and that is problematic because what we are saying is faith and love are disconnected. I can be a person full of faith, but zero love. But what does the Bible have to say about that? You know, in First Corinthians chapter 13, uh, Paul, he wrote, he said that even if I speak um, with the tongues of men and angels, but I have not love, I, be I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. So uh, later on, he goes on to say, you know, I can do great things. Like I can have the gift of prophecy, understand mysteries, all knowledge. Though I have faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So I am nothing. If we look at that in um, you know, uh, the scriptures, in the Greek, uh, when that term nothing is used, it simply means not even one. Or in other words, that word nothing there, which Paul wrote in the Greek, means zero. Uh, so... Uh, what Paul was saying is, see, we can we can try to be great ministers of God. We can try to be great believers. We can do many things through our faith. But ultimately, everything should be based in love. If there's no love, if there's no sincere love in our hearts, which motivates us, right? Why do we do all this? Because of the love of God. We love God. We love people. So that's why we do all this. But if that is not there and we are doing everything else, then what does Paul say? He says, we're a big zero. Uh, so faith, hope, and love 
and in first Corinthians 13, Paul ends by saying that the greatest of these is love. So love must be our motivation. Now, what kind of love are we talking about? Uh, you know, when we study the word love again, which is given here um, in uh, First Corinthians 13, like in English, we use the same word love, isn't it? We say things like, uh, um, I love God, uh, or uh, we could say, uh, you know, I love the weather, or you could say, I love my food. Um, but we're using the same word love to express our delight in something. But in the Greek language, it's not like that. Love has different words. And so we have to look at what love Paul is talking about. So when we uh, examine the word love, um, you know, there are words like storge. Storge means um, uh, uh, love uh, for the family. Or there is a, a term known as philia. Philia is love between friends. Um, or there's a word called eros. Eros is love between sexual love between husband and wife. Um, so uh, there are different terms for love. Uh, which love is Paul using in 1 Corinthians 13? He's using the word agape. Okay? Agape. So he's talking about um, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Love is agape. Or the meaning of the word agape means the God kind of love. So what love do we need to motivate us? What love do we need to be grounded in? Uh, it is God kind of love. So what is God's kind of love? Uh, we can see the kind of love that God had for us, Jesus had for us. It's a self-sacrificial love, okay? which means that um, God put us first uh, and uh, he sacrificed us all. Or in other words, you can also describe it as uh, unconditional love, which has no conditions. Uh, God didn't say, okay, you do this, then I'll do this. You do, you become okay, then I'll die for you on the cross. That is transactional, give and take. You do this, I'll do that. That's not God kind of love. Okay, maybe the world preaches that kind of love today, where uh, you know um, people are just trying to meet each other's needs uh, and uh, calling that love. But that's not the God kind of love. The Bible talks about agape. Agape is uh, the unconditional love of God, where you know God did. Uh, while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. You know, um, what manner of love is this that we should be called the children of God? Uh, that, you know, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only uh, begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, you know, that is the kind of love that God is talking about. And he's asking every believer, as much as we talked about faith, right? Uh, God is saying, yeah, have faith. But there's something called as love also, which should be the foundation. What love uh, are we communicating about again? Agape, God kind of love. Motivated by that kind of love to live our life as a believer, to live, um, you know, uh, to do the work of the ministry as, as a child of God as a, or as a, a minister of God. So be motivated by agape or the God kind of love. Uh, now, uh, just one last thing I'll say, and it's time to sort of close off. Um, uh, but you know, sometimes we may feel that, yeah, it sounds so good that we must have love for everyone and all. But maybe as a person, as a, a personality, we feel like I don't have that kind of love in my heart, right? Uh, but there is a scripture again, you know, Romans 5, 5, it says, uh, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. In other words, it says the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so even if uh, we don't have, we feel like we don't have you know, love, uh, we can depend on the love of God in our hearts. So you can use his love to love people. You can use his love uh, to be motivated to live for God. So with that, I'm going to stop here. It's 9.50. Uh, we'll take a 10 minute break. Let's come back. I see uh, a question on the chat. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that and maybe a few more thoughts about love and continue on into the next chapter. Okay. So um, let's go for a break, everyone. See you all soon in 10 minutes. Thank you.